But why, you may be asking? Why in the world would you want to recreate the prince from Snow White? He's uninteresting at best and problematic at worst. And we meet him once in the beginning of the film, and then he disappears in the entirety of the movie, only to return at the very end to save the princess and kiss her while she's sleeping. We never even learn his name. But sometimes inspiration comes from the most unexpected of places, and often when the muse strikes, we have no choice but to listen. But in order to understand all that, we have to journey back to March of 2020. On March 11th, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. As the number of coronavirus cases soars above 3,000. As we come on the air tonight, much of America shutting down. I really do want to explore life during the 16th century, but I also want to do it from the comfort and safety of my 21st century existence. But suddenly I found myself in circumstances similar to those of Shakespeare and his contemporaries. Theaters have all been closed down by the plague. I know, I know, I know. It's not actually the plague, but you get the idea. You see, I work in theater as a costume technician and designer, and suddenly I went from working on five different productions to zero. Not only that, but all of the recreation events that I had planned on attending had also been canceled. I found myself alone at home with no inspiration and no outlet to share my art. My voice as an artist had been effectively silenced. But the weeks turned into months and there was still no end in sight. And I found myself languishing in a world of pure banality. And then this past April, I was scrolling through my YouTube homepage and a video thumbnail caught my eye. Carolina Zabrowska, AKA Meme Mom, had released a video where she made a German Renaissance version of the Disney Snow White. I was intrigued. I mean, she turned Disney's Snow White into a Saxon princess. How could I not be? So I clicked the video and watched. And I have to say, I was super impressed. She doesn't usually do German Ren, and yet she took one of the most complicated and confusing looks and made a beautiful chronic inspired gown. She really married the chronic look with this Disney icon. And for the first time in 13 months, I felt the muse begin to stir within me. My very first thought was, I need to make the prince to go with her version of Snow White. So you see, I really love making menswear and I've been wanting to do more 16th century menswear. So this was the perfect opportunity. Now it had been a long time since I had actually watched Disney's Snow White. So that was the next thing I did. And it really was not how I remembered. And the prince, he had such a small part and he was so uninteresting that it really made me not want to recreate him. So then I started looking at the other characters and honestly, none of them felt right either. As I was doing some more research, I came across another video that was the making of Snow White. And what I learned in that video intrigued me so much that I changed my mind and decided to go ahead and make the prince's outfit after all. And in order to explain that, we have to journey back to 1934 when Walt Disney revealed his plan to make the very first feature length animated film. You see, this had never been done before. And like so many other visionaries before him, Disney was faced with the challenge that comes along with creating something brand new. While he and his animators were experts at animating cartoon characters, animating a human meant pushing their expertise to a whole new level. In the making of Snow White, one of the animators explains. One of the toughest things you'll ever do is a human. The toughest thing you'll ever do is a male human. The poor prince was not coming off too well. Thank you. And then I found out that the original story actually included so much more of the prince. He was originally intended to be the second main character, actively aiding Snow White against the evil queen. But as it happens with mounting production costs and the difficulties of animating the prince, compromises had to be made and his parts kept getting cut and cut and cut until his role comprised only two minutes of the 90 minute film. Their abilities had not yet developed to meet their expectations. But despite all this, when the film was released three years later, it was a resounding success. It was so successful that it went from being called Disney's Folly to receiving a special Academy Award. And of course, as we all know, Disney went on to become the leader in animated film world because they persevered and continued to learn and push their boundaries boundaries. But it all started with Snow White and the failed attempts at animating 
a prince. And knowing that renewed my desire to create his outfit. I also learned that although we're not given his name in the film, he is often referred to as Prince Florian. So then the next step was to start in on the design. And in her video, Carolina Zabrowska explains the plausible real life inspiration for Disney's Snow White. And in doing so, she chooses a look from a Lucas Cronick the Elder portrait from 1534. And I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to her video so you can watch the whole thing. So Carolina Snow White is from 1534 Saxony, but if we look at the animation of Prince Florian, what he wears is a whole lot earlier. So his actual outfit won't work. So for inspiration, I picked out this particular outfit from Matthaus Schwa's book of fashion. What we're going to do to combine these two and to make this representative of Prince Florian, we are going to be using the silhouette and the pieces from the Schwa's outfit but we're going to be coloring it with colors from Prince Florian's outfit. So I'm gonna use the dark blue that we see on his tabard for the wams and the upper hose. And then I can use a light blue from the animation for the contrast and the lower hose. Now he has some gold accents on his tabard, so I'm gonna use that as stripes of gold on his pants. Now I already have a blue hat. One other thing I wanted to mention is that because I live in Southern California, one of the things I really like to do is to wear Lawns Connect style shorts when it's warm out. So so one of the things I want to work on is making it so that the upper hose is detachable from the lower part so that I can wear them as shorts. So let's pick out some fabric fabric choices. So one of the things that I decided was really important because I haven't really been making much money over the last year is that I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this. I wanted to try to use things from my stash. If I have fabric, I might as well use it. I know, I know it's like this big joke about whoever dies with the most fabric wins. I'm like, uh -uh, I want to use that fabric. I, I want to enjoy it, you know? So I want to, I don't want to overbuy things. I want to buy the things that make me happy and use them. So I'm gonna use what I got in my stash. And right away, the one, first thing I knew, I knew I wanted, I have this gorgeous blue wool that I knew I wanted to use. Isn't that beautiful? It's this nice, thick melton. It's just fantastic. So I have this gold fabric and for th this is going to be the trim or the stripes that are going to go down the pant. For the contrast color I have this blue. So I have this, it needs to be pressed. It's a machine Dupioni, which Dupioni technically is not a 16th century fabric, but this is fabric that I have. I don't have any any other light blue. This is the only blue I have and at least it's silk. So typically a taffeta would be the correct fabric to use, but I don't have any and Taffeta silk is expensive right now, uh, so Dupioni it is. For the doublet in the Book of Clothing, Mataus writes that it was made of half silk. So I started looking. I did have this silk. It's Again, this is another Dupioni. You can see the slubs in it, but it's completely the wrong blue to go with the wool. I don't love them together. Which brought me to this. I've had this in my stash for a long time. It is totally plastic, <laughs> so synthetic it isn't even funny. And, but look at how well they go together. I mean, they are almost exactly perfect. So, I don't know. Um, they go really well together, but it's very synthetic, which makes me wonder. A lot of times working with synthetic fabrics can create complications. So I don't know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do. It does have a nice sheen, it's a pretty fabric. I might go looking for some more fabrics and see if I can find anything. But otherwise, I'll be using this one, which I'm not 100% thrilled with, but I guess it is what it is, you know? And sometimes you just have to make compromises, so this could be my compromise. We'll see. Okay, so we've got our strips cut, although it occurs to me now that most of what we're doing is pretty straight. So I probably didn't need to cut them on the bias, but there may be a couple that that will come in handy. So it, it's all done, it is what it is. I now need to fold them in on each side. And so I have this tool that I like to use that helps me to iron them, but 
that's not going to work. It's so narrow and this fabric is really stiff. I tried it. It didn't want to work. So then I only have this size of bias tape maker and it's too wide for what I want to do. This is not working. But luckily, Facebook, a hack had come across my feed about trick to do bias tape. So I have this pin here that I have laid out across that I'm going to use to put the fabric through. So let's try this out. We have strips. We have lots and lots of strips. So now it's time to apply them. Here we go. Whew. Okay. Ah, that's a lot of sewing. I've got most of it on, and I just want to check in and do a quick fitting. So anyways, I, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and baste this all together and give this a quick fitting. And just so I'd rather just take the time to baste it together. It's, you know, one, two, three seams really. So it's not, not a big deal. I'll get those basted together. And the next time you'll see me, we'll be doing a quick mock-up fitting. I don't think you're ready for this. This will probably go away when it's not quite so. When I've got the slashes in there, it won't be as tight. Um, I like the way that all the, the stripes are falling. I'm happy with that. Now, I do have some fit issues back here, and I have... Well, I recorded this, but apparently I didn't hit record. Did I just not record any of that? <laughs> so, you can see that when I pull this, that helps the other place I had some issues is back here. Now I can't really get in here to pin it real well. So I'm gonna wonder if I can, I wonder if I can get a pin in here. Let's see, can I get a pin in here? Was fun now I'm like super hot and sweaty um, okay so now the next step is that I am going to take these off and I will make adjustments and we'll check back later I took all the adjustments that I made and I transferred them to my pattern. What I now need to do is I'm gonna take this pattern here and I'm going to turn it into the pattern that's going to be for the contrast that goes underneath the slashes. And it's really just going to be in the main part of the leg. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and do the base pattern and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the silk and then I will, and then we will sew the silk into the back. And then after that, we'll deal with linings. Hopefully today, I think at this point, looking at it, it's a, it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. I think I can get to where I can cut the lining. So if I get all that done today, and if I could finish the pants tomorrow, that gives me Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to do the top. So at this point, I'm, I am a little worried that I'm not gonna be able to get it all done because inevitably everything takes longer than you think. So you always have to double it or sometimes triple it. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on to the next part.
Okay, so here's my new piece. I'm ready to cut this out of my fabric. with it. I, I overestimated the amount that I needed. There's a lot of poof. Way more than I want. I'm looking at my source image. It's not super poofy. I, I don't, it's too much. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back some of it out. The way this is shaped, I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. Yeah, I'm much happier with this. I am not thrilled with the fact that this line is going inward like that. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. So I really wish this was more straight up and down like this. I could take these off and re-angle them, but then I also still have the slashes are still going to have a bit of an angle and it feels like, yeah, my back seam is where it needs to be. <sighs> so yeah, good times. Um, this is one of the problems with fitting yourself is that you miss a lot of stuff. So I really need to figure out why I'm having this this issue, I can still fit into the pants that this pattern came from. And I don't think I've gained that much and, and they weren't that tight to begin with. So I, I've, I've pulled them out, let's take a look. So these are the pants that I made previously that this, that the pattern that I used is from, oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Oh, Lelina, look at that. I didn't even clip my threads. Uh, okay, well, I don't know if I wanna show you guys this. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, sorry. Let's talk, let, let, let's chat. So I'm a little embarrassed to show you this because past Lelina took a lot of shortcuts, it looks like, oh, gosh. Um, all right, I just have one request, don't judge me. When I made this, I, did it very quickly and I made a lot of mistakes. And I, looking now, I didn't do a great job of fixing them. Yeah, this was many years ago. I've learned a lot since then, but also there's a lot of new things that I did on this. So, all right. 
Let's look. Don't judge me. Wow, I didn't even put a stay tape in there. Wow, there is so much wrong with this. I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't, okay, yeah. Anyways, I see what's wrong here. I'm remembering now, I remember I had the same issue with these shorts. <laughs> I had to stitch on this extra piece because it didn't fit. Yeah, so that happened. And then past Elena didn't leave me a note on the pattern. Oh, but that would explain why I'm having to do the exact same thing right now. Man, I can't believe I didn't leave a note on the pattern. Oh, if I add an extension onto the pants, it's gonna look like I added an extension onto the pants. I don't want it to look that way. And then if I, if I don't, the trim will be slanted. So I could move the trim over and that would be relatively easy to do. The problem then is, is that my slashes would still be slanted. And that I can't change. I'm not recutting the leg because I'd have to re-sew all the trim, redo all the slashes. So that is definitely not an option. Have you ever done a project that just feels doomed to just every step of the way? I, I kind of feel like that's where I'm at right now with this project. It's like it was cursed. There's certain projects that just are cursed this is one. I can't. <laughs> All right, I don't know what to do right now. I just need to step away and think about it, I think. <laughs> Cross your fingers that it all works out. So sometimes you have to step away from the project and then the solution comes to you. So I went for a walk, took a nap, and then I went and got myself a little drinky poo, a little Baja Blast. Mm. And I think I may have come up with the solution. Check it out. I'm gonna cut a piece that I can put underneath here and extend outwards, and I'm gonna hide it in here. Let's just get started on it, shall we? that crisis was averted. Yay, that looks fantastic. I'm pretty happy with it. So now it's time for some closures. Now I'm gonna use hooks and eyes, but in, in the artwork that we went from, they would have been laced together. I, <laughs> when I gotta go, to the, I need to be able to quickly uh, go to the bathroom. So uh, having to untie it is just way too much of a problem. As a, as a um, not having the correct anatomy to use a cod piece, I need to be able to pull my pants down quickly. <laughs> so one of the things I've learned is that I like to use hooks and eyes for this. Also, the other thing I typically don't do is I, I don't point my doublet to my pants because again, I need to be able to pull my pants down. time for an update. So I didn't get the pants finished when I wanted to get them done. I had forgotten about some en previous engagements we had and on Monday and Tuesday. So it's Wednesday now and I was supposed to be finished. I, I, I haven't even finished the pants. So basically at this point, I'm way behind where I wanted to be right now. The reason why I wanted to get that done early was because I wanted to work on the next video I had planned to come out for the feather series, but I'm not gonna be able to do that. There's no way I'm gonna have this ready for costume symposium and still be able to do the feather video. So I'm gonna have to put the feather video off until after I'm done with this video. So unfortunately, you know, that's just sometimes how things work out. 
I'm a little frustrated with that, but it is what it is, you know? And part of it is, is I feel like the last time I actually made something and cut all things, it's been over almost two years since I've actually had to pattern something and cut it and everything. I'm really out of practice, I'm figuring out, which is a little frustrating. I'll be honest, I'm a little frustrated, <laughs> but I know I need to do this if I really wanna get back on the horse and start creating and continuing to grow. I, I you know, I always, I, I'm of the belief that you never stop learning. So I wanna continue to learn and I need to continue to create in order to do that. So I'm glad that um, I'm thankful to Carolina for being an inspiration to me. You know, life gets in the way sometimes. At any rate, the whole point of this uh, is an update. I am behind. <laughs> Sitting down and thinking about the top half, I think I'll be in better shape than the lower half. Time will tell. Because if one thing I have learned and do remember from my years of doing this is each project has its own way of creating its own obstacles. So I'm gonna get started and let's see how far we get today, huh? So I'm working on the wands. I'm making my fabric sandwich. So uh, it's it's got a, a U-shaped insert that goes inside, which is called the breast fuck. So what I'm doing is I'm working on the base of the wand. So here's our fabric sandwich. First thing is our interfacing, which in today's world, we would use a hair canvas. I'm using a head of your linen that I had. I, I'm out of linen canvas. And then we've got a, our flannel. And what this is for is this is to give some loft to the outer fabric so that it doesn't look like we've just sewn paper together. So this is, what was what we would call an interlining. Anything that affects the hand of the outer fabric would be an interlining. And then we have our outer fabric on top and we are going to base these together. been just cooped up inside the studio, which is really the corner of my bedroom. So also been really hot, but it's like actually kind of nice right now. So I decided I needed at least a little diffused light. So I'm over here. There's just one area in our little pool. Like it's a little alcove that you can kind of like hide in. So that's where I'm at right now. I have a lot of hand sewing to do. So I'm just going to sit out here and try to jam out some hand sewing and get it done. Um, it's Sunday afternoon. I am almost out of time. So... We'll see how far we get. It might be a late night tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna get sewing and uh, enjoy, enjoy the change of scenery. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> So I've got all the pleats in the breast fleck sewn in and on the body part, I've got the, the back, uh, the two back pieces stitched and then I've got the sides stitched together. Now, before I go any further into the shoulders, I do want to do a quick fading because 
there's nothing worse than getting it all put together and then it doesn't fit. So we're gonna do a quick fitting and see where we're at. All right, here it is. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I did have to adjust the shoulder you'll see here. I had to bring that up and change the angle just a smidge. Uh, I like where the waist is falling. I'm not 100% happy with how the breast fuck is laying. It's also something I can adjust later when I actually do add the closures in. So I think, I think I'm just gonna go forward and finish up this and then we'll move on to sleeves. Yay! All right, I am moving on to the sleeve. Well, I did it, it's done. I'm not gonna lie, this one was a bit of a struggle. Uh, I think, you know, there was just a lot of compromises that had to happen. I definitely underestimated how long it would take and especially underestimated the amount of time it would add, uh, the filming would add to it. Really happy with the shorts, really happy with how they fit and feel. I cannot wait to wear them. I do wanna work on making sure that I'm adding enough ease. Menswear just needs a little bit more ease to look right. The sleeve is great. I would like to, if I do it again, add a little bit more length to it. The other thing is when the lower legs are attached, I didn't add enough at ease as far as the length uh, in the back of the leg, so I would like to do that. So my other big realization is, you know, once somebody had once told me that when you are doing a slashed pair of hosen that you need to fit them super tight before you slash them. And so that's what I had done. The, you know, if I, this is my, for myself, it's my third pair. I've made a couple others besides that. But I realized one of the things I had been thinking that 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 didn't always work. Whenever I did that, I would end up getting basically a saggy diaper butt is what it looked like to me. So, so what I did is I ended up fitting my lining close to my body. And so it basically fits me just right, like with a little bit of ease, so it has some comfort to it. And then what I did is I stitched the three back seams of the outer pants to the three back seams of the lining. And so it holds everything in place much better. And everything sits where it's supposed to. And it just, it's much more comfortable. So that is what I'm gonna be doing in the future. Let's, let's, I'm gonna, I need to put you down. This camera is hit. Oh. Let's come down here. Come down here with me. I'm just gonna hang out down here on the floor for a bit. I definitely struggled with the fitting because I was super overconfident in my ability to fit myself which in the past I've been able to do, but with a lot of the fit issues happening in the back, it made it really difficult to fit myself and it made it difficult for me to see the issues as they were happening. And it ended up costing me a lot of time, which meant that I ended up having to make some compromises that I wouldn't have necessarily had to have made had I actually just admitted that I couldn't do it myself and asked for help. I did have to make some compromises, you know, some of them due to budgetary constraints. I had to use, I had to stick with using fabric that came from my stash. Now I'm happy that I had fabrics that worked for what I wanted to do, but it also meant that I had to choose fabrics that weren't ideal, both from a historical accuracy standpoint, as well as from the, the fact that, you know, that blue synthetic ended up being fairly diff, I thought it would be, but I was, it was confirmed. It was, fairly difficult to work with. It, so that also slowed me down. I was also reminded of why I don't like to make clothing for myself on a deadline. It's too close to what I already do at my job. And I want my own projects to add to my enjoyment, not to create more stress. And one of the things that is enjoyable for me is the exploration of techniques that would have been done in period, which is why I choose to do hand sewing. There's nothing wrong with using a sewing machine. I just like to do things by hand because it brings me enjoyment. Overall, although I do have some things I would like to improve, I'm actually quite happy with the outfit. I really love the shorts and I cannot wait to wear them to an event. But the best part is I really do think that this has pulled me out of my creative slump. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Meme Mom for the inspiration that led to this. And without further ado, here's your reveal.